Okay, so I've finished the striping on the sills here. They're all done up. Uh, off camera as well, I went ahead and touched up all the details that we've added. So everything's painted. All the roof details are finished. All the grab irons and everything like that are painted. And I went ahead and finished the patching on the nose as well. Um, I'll adjust the lighting a little bit here in a second so we can see this. Actually, I might be able to do it right now. It's not really helping, but anyway, you can see again, I, all the pilot details are really nicely done up now. Uh, they're blended in pretty well. I just mixed up a custom color for the gray and the yellow to get everything done. On the nose, we've eliminated the class lights, and as you can see, we now have a completely smooth nose. What I did for the nose here on the prototype, the front is very dirty and grimy. The patching looks pretty crusty. I wanted to maintain that on this model or the look of that on this model rather, instead of matching the exact yellow. And you can see at the base where the door access doors are, you can see the original yellow on the top is that faded grimy looking yellow. So I just mixed up a custom color um, and I airbrushed that on, patched it up, looks pretty good. On the cab, there is a replacement door where they painted the door the same color as the patching on the sides. You can see I paint matched the patch color, put it on the door, and now the door is finished as well. Again on the top, all the details painted on, and all the grab irons and everything else, stitch lights are all painted. Uh, on the pilot, we just still need to add that snow plow, but other than that, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and start working on some other little things. The other thing I did here was I went ahead and started adding some warning labels to the sides and the front, back ends, that kind of thing. Um, I was working on all kinds of little things like that, matching all the prototype label placement and stuff like that. There's a lot of electrical labels and stuff like that that are all over this engine, so I went ahead and added those according to prototype photos. Last thing I'm going to show on this back end here, I went ahead and finished that patching as well. And you can see all the details are also painted as well. There's that gray patch that I was talking about we were going to have to replicate. I just did this by masking off this square off the squared off area and then I made a gray and brown paint mix with acrylic and then I just washed that on in gradual layers to get that grimy effect. And then I just took a toothpick with a blunt end and cleaned off the numbers to still make them look relatively clean. But you can see again all the details are now painted and the model's looking really good. So I'm going to start blackening the grills on this. This is a common thing on these locomotives. The grills will get pretty dirty relatively fast on these. Obviously this engine has quite a few years of service. These things never get cleaned either so these grills always have a, a tendency to pick up a lot of grime. And I'm going to be replicating that with my black acrylic. I'm using the Anita's brand acrylic. And I'm going to be using my Citadel number 5 brush. And I'll also be using a liner brush to do this. The liner brush in particular I'll be using for the air grill right behind the cab. We'll go ahead and take care of that. Uh, this is a very simple process. Even if you're not weathering a model, just blackening the grills on a model makes it look much less toy-like. It makes it look a lot more realistic. Excuse my jerkiness there. I'm just going to be taking my camera and zooming it in here. Starting in this corner, all you got to do is take a little bit of acrylic, and I don't thin this down, however, if you wish to thin this down, you can, um, but I just uh, pretty much take it just right out of the bottle like this, I start one corner at a time, and I just slowly start filling in the grill. You can mask this off if you want, if you have uh, unsteady hands or, you know, you don't want to have to clean up afterwards you can use a little bit of masking. Uh, I in particular I don't really I'm not really too worried about this. If I get a little black paint on anything it's acrylic I can wipe it back off with the wet q-tip uh, but again if you want to mask this that's your call there I'll leave that to you this is just the way I do it personally. Now the one grill I do mask on a model like this is the dynamic grill just because it's harder to get the paint off if you get paint splatter all over the side of the model like this. Also it's almost a dead set guarantee doing it this way that you're going to get paint all over this and I have messed this area off with a little bit of scotch tape just to avoid this but this is where I'm using my uh, Citadel number two thin medium brush here and I just take and I fill in this area with this brush. This is very simple here as well you just take and fill it in until you get everything covered and I'm doing a relatively light coat here. This is mostly dry brushing, but you can see that paint stretches pretty far on this. Later on, I'll of course go back and I'll add a little bit of powder to all these grills as well, but the black is just the base. Here you can see we got the grills painted. Look really nice. And this is a basic detail enhancement you can do to any model really, and it brings a lot more life to it. 
On the top here you can see I got the grills painted as well. AC units painted up, darkened up, exhaust, fans, and then the radiator section which is a little bit tricky because you gotta work around the base of the grill. And of course I'll enhance this all with powders and chocks later on and then I'll start adding some streaking and stuff coming down from this so it'll look really good. But that's the basic start. Uh, we can go ahead and start working on some uh, weathering effects now that we've got the majority of the work done. So I'm going to be starting with the weathering on this engine is the front, the walkways, nose, etc. Uh, I like to do the walkways up in a lot more detail than I used to. I used to just take washes and grind these up, but anymore I like to do a lot of the more subtle chipping effects that you see on these walkways. These really do get eaten up uh, because obviously they're getting a lot of traffic from people climbing up off and on these steps constantly. As you can see on the back of the 6112's cabinet here, the top was originally painted yellow and then they would have put the uh, tread on top of that. You can see it's all pretty much peeled away and it reveals this interesting um, color contrast where you can see all this gray chips and everything. And what I've done is I've basically taken the battery box and I've painted the gray over this piece and then dabbed it on in a random manner like this. Not really prototypical, but just following some prototype photos of units like this and the way that the paint deteriorates. And I've done this effect on this um, this top of the battery box here on the engineer side. So that's a cool little effect. On the nose, I'm pretty much going to be doing the same kind of effect and also on the front walkway. Remember the walkways in particular on the front and back are going to be the most high traffic areas. Um, also on the, you know, the rear half of the locomotive on the actual uh, personnel walkways along the sides of the engine, uh, there'll be a little bit more traffic, but on the front in particular, like I said, it's usually where you get a lot more traffic. As an example, I'll show you a Union Pacific tunnel motor that I'm working on. This one I'm actually doing at uh, the same time as I'm doing the 6112, reason being because since I have all the colors out and all the detail parts done for Union Pacific style locomotives, I figured it would save me a little time if I did both locomotives together. This one is a newer Atherin release with a lot more uh, details. It's an XSP prototype I'm working on. You can see I've done this kind of effect, though a lot more severely on this locomotive. You can see the heavy deterioration and chipping with a lot of the yellow being exposed underneath as the uh, tread starts to peel off. It's on the same on the walkways here. You can see all the different effects on this. But just really starting to get weathered up here. I'll bring this locomotive back later on so you guys can see it, but uh, for the most part this is a good example, this locomotive here, of what I'm going to be trying to do to this locomotive, though not as... Okay, so on the nose I'm going to be starting by chipping some of the gray off here, and then the rest I'll fill in with just the straight yellow paint right out of the bottle. I like to take an X-Acto blade with a nice fresh sharp blade on here, and generally where you see the majority of the chipping on the front of the nose, as a matter of fact I'm going to go ahead and put this at an angle that way my finger isn't too much in the way here but generally you'll see the majority of the chipping on the front of the nose but basically what I like to do is start in one general area at a time and just rough up the edges I'm not trying to take all the gray off on the front I just want to make it look somewhat rough but this is a great way to kind of model some of that deterioration because like I said this area does get eaten up quite a bit and these don't really get you know touched up maintained anything like that uh, they really get painted the one time and then you know time takes over and this stuff starts to deteriorate so you know keep that in mind doesn't have to be you know very perfect here either you can keep it pretty random I'm just going around and just adding these little chips and dings here and there Again, just in random little areas. Alright, you can see I got the chipping effects done with the blade on the nose here. Just some subtle little uh, effects, basically chipping into the paint to get some of that deterioration. It looks pretty good. Um, if I get some of this dust off there, there we go. Uh, I'm going to be going ahead and finishing this off with a little bit of acrylic work. And I'm going to be applying some further chipping using the acrylic, which is Anita's Pale Gray. I'm going to be applying this straight out of the bottle, not diluted, and I'm going to be using a relatively frayed uh, Citadel Number no. 2 brush here as well. I particularly like these because it leaves a random splotchy pattern, and in terms of the application here, what I basically like to do is I take the paint, like I said, straight out of the cap, just like this, and I just very lightly load the bristles. Literally not that much. 
something like that. You can see there's a literally just a little bit. Matter of fact, I'll just put I'll go ahead and put a little bit more on there. You don't need that much. And then I just take it over to my uh, paper, take a little bit off, and I just go into the area. And if I zoom in here, you guys can watch the magic. I just go in here and I start adding a little bit of the gray for some random discoloration effect here. This is again replicating some more for the deterioration. This next little bit I'll go a little bit heavier just like this. In particular around that heavier chipping on the front of the nose is where I'll kind of concentrate most of that. Higher traffic areas generally they'll have more chipping so around the top of the walkway here where the little grab iron is, that's going to be an area you're going to see a lot more of that kind of lighter deterioration on so we're going to be focusing most of that on there but again it's just a subtle little little technique here you can again go pretty heavy on this like I showed that tunnel motor earlier another way you can do this is you can take the airbrush spray some fade mix on this and then you can take a micro brush and chip away at it sometimes that's another cool little effect getting this done I'm going to basically be repeating this step on the walkways as well that's also very easy again just using this brush I go a little bit heavier on this, and this does take a little bit of time and patience, but it looks really good if you do it this way. Uh, I generally just start kind of at the front and just randomly apply this to the deck just like this. I'll go back and take some of this off right now. I'm just applying it relatively rough like this, just around that nose like this. Okay, so with the majority of the paint applied, you can see it's pretty blotchy, kind of scattered about. I'm going to start working it with a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol, straight from the bottle. And I'm going to be using a micro brush like this to apply the brush in a random motion. Something like this, kind of poking at the paint randomly to create little areas of peeling and chipping. So I just basically load the micro brush up with a little bit of the alcohol. I take a little bit off, mostly most of it off on a paper, paper towel, anything like that, and then I just go ahead and again I concentrate this mainly on the higher traffic areas. So think the areas where you're getting on and off the engine, like around the walkway steps, stuff like that. And I just randomly kind of come in here, start brushing it. I'm keeping this zoomed out for now so you guys can see from the back what I'm doing. And I just start working that paint. If you load the brush up, just wipe it off on a paper towel. And then load your micro brush back up and go back in for seconds. If we go zoom in here, you guys can kind of see what we're doing now. What we're going to do, again, start from wherever you want really. And then just start chipping away just like this. But again, keep this in the highest traffic areas. This is where you're going to see most of this kind of deterioration. Not so much like at the base of the nose or anything like that. You'll see the fading and some basic chipping and deterioration, but for the most part, a lot of this is going to be centered on the walkway where people are mostly standing, where you get most of that higher traffic. After I've done this, okay, I'll go in with a dry Q-tip and I'll just blot some of this excess paint up a little bit just to kind of take some of that excess paint up and this is basically the effect you have left you have these little random patches and you see this a lot in these locomotives like I said uh, but it's a great way to do this effect so basically you know it's just a matter of taking your time being patient and you, again you can get some really good effects with something as simple as this and again you can go as little as or as light as you want on this uh, in this particular case again this prototype is pretty old and it's got a lot of deterioration on the deck so I'm going to be going pretty heavy with this